first hit the back button to get into edit mode. You can scroll through different editing options using either the left and right triggers or the control pad. To start programming objects, go to the second item which is the object tool for editing and press the A button. Notice that the cone has turned into a donut. This is the character or item selection cursor. Pressing the B button gets us back to the editing menu and the cursor returns to an upside down cone shape. To select an object, move the cursor underneath it. Now try selecting the coding. As soon as you are close to being underneath it, the kodu will glow and the color palette will appear at the top. When you have selected an object, you will have the options appear on the left and the color palette at the top. The color palette is for changing the color of the object or character. Press left and right on the directional pad to change a character's color. Now try moving the cursor to the cloud on the left. If you're having trouble getting under an object, look for its shadow on the ground. Once the cloud is selected, you'll notice that there's a dashed line from it and all other clouds pointing to the far cloud. When you see links between objects like this, it means that the object or bot has been marked as a creatable. A creatable shares the same qualities in programming with its clones. The creatable master is the one they are all pointing to. We'll learn more about that later. There are two other programming objects in this game. The first is the castle, which the coder is trying to get to. And the other is the wisp, which appears when you win. All these objects have their own programming scripts, which you can change. Now that we understand the elements of this world, let's get to programming the Kodu. Go back and put your cursor on him, and press Y to program. 